Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time passing, please like, subscribe and share. For my existing subscribers, you know the drill. Thank you and continue to give me your comments and I appreciate your support. Um, today, I was sent a WhatsApp about Anchor Butter. Now, I don't like margarine. I only eat butter. And I only, I have, I kind of switch between Anchor and Lure Pack and sometimes Kerrygold. But Anchor is kind of like my favourite. So when I got this, um, this WhatsApp that said Anchor Butter had been contaminated with HIV, showing this man handcuffed and um, apparently he had injected Anchor and injected anchor butter with HIV. I kind of got a bit peed off because I'm thinking to myself, you know, I love anchor butter. And, you know, this is this could turn me off. This could stop me from buying it. Anyway, I thought to myself, I bet it's a hoax. So I Googled it and apparently it came out in 2018 and it was indeed a hoax. The thing is, is that not everyone is going to check out that information. People will just pass it around and damage Anchor's reputation. And also, I can imagine how it would affect sales because people do that, don't they? I don't know why people would spread deliberate lies. I don't know why somebody would sit in their homes and create something like that that could turn a company, it could actually make that company go bust. Why would somebody just sit at home and think, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to create something and I'm going to make it look like anchor butter is contaminated and nobody will buy it. What joy or what satisfaction does somebody get out of that other than to feel joy that somebody's actually believed what he's put out there or what she's put out there? I don't think it's very funny. I, I think it's really disturbing for people to sit there and ruin, ruin reputations and credibility of otherwise authentic companies. Anyway, it kind of led me to think, you know, I thought of that advert. Um, is it really butter? Is it? Um, I think that's what it was. I forget what I wrote it down. You know, that, that advert, I can't believe it's butter. And that kind of came to my head. And then I kind of thought about the reason why people um, conduct ho hoaxes. And when is a hoax a joke? Because remember, we used to have candid camera. And people would be all set up and they would believe that what was happening was true. And then they would say, oh, you're on candid camera. And the person would almost have a heart attack because they thought the whole thing was true. And, you know, th there's a borderline because in that kind of situation, it did make hoaxes socially acceptable. Because when people who watch candid camera, they used to get a kick out, kick out of people um, being made a fool out of because that's basically what you're doing you're making a fool out of someone you're making somebody feel gullible and that person is left feeling really stupid and embarrassed to have fallen for it so what kind of kick do people get out of making people feel like idiots or making people feel as though they're stupid because these people aren't really stupid you know because if you are fed something that's in line with your values like supposing I didn't like butter then that ad that that kind of um message wouldn't affect me because I just think oh well I don't eat butter but because I do eat butter or I do like butter that that particular uh, message is going to affect me and think to my, make me think to myself I can't have butter anymore because that was my immediate affect my immediate um, reaction oh no I can't have anchor anymore and yes you have other options but then the thing is with these kind of situations is that it's not just one product it kind of transfers well if they can do it to anchor they can do it to Lurpak if they can do it to Lurpak they can do it to Kerrygold and that kind of stuff so it doesn't just stop there when people send out um, when people create these kind of hoax, hoaxes. So then you also have people who call 911 
and actually put people's lives in danger because while the police are going to a hoax call, somebody else might really need the police. So what really goes in on in the minds of people who create hoaxes and spread them around? Is it a cry for attention? Is it because they're bored? Is it a form of entertainment? I have no idea. All I know is that people are sitting in their homes creating imaginary stuff. Imagine, I think there's a lot of alter egos out there. There are a lot of people who pretend they're something that they're not. There are a lot of people who hide behind screens, especially with online um, dating. You don't know who you're speaking to. People exaggerate, don't they? People lie by omission. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who's real from who's not real. And somebody could create a massive story and you believe it. And then they can say, oh, I was only joking and kind of minimize it. But the thing is, they've made it so convincing and you're believing it. And then you feel kind of stupid for believing it. So once again, it's about making people feel stupid. Is it some kind of sociopathical, sociopath um, mindset that, that does things like this to put people in jeopardy, to make people feel like idiots? You know what I mean? Because that is what a lot of the people who create these hoaxes um, are probably thinking. Because why else would they do it? Why else would somebody go and tell the police, look, there's a bomb in a school when there isn't? Have the whole police force rallying around the school looking for a bomb that doesn't exist when there could be somebody else in danger elsewhere? Is that person getting a kick, a kick out of it at home, looking at all the police making a fool of themselves, looking for something that doesn't exist? Is that what this is about? Is that what hoaxes are about? Because hoaxes aren't funny. It's different like on April Fool's Day and you make the odd joke and, be, and you say April Fool's, but it all depends to what degree. Are you putting somebody in danger by your hoax? Are you damaging the reputation of something or someone by your hoax? Because these are the key factors. If you're just making a lighthearted joke, that's totally different. But, you know, it's when people's lives are endangered or reputation is compromised because of a hoax when it becomes a problem. Now, um, what else was I going to say? Um, also, I'm not blaming people who share this kind of information. A lot of people, they do it on impulse. They're trying to protect the person that they're sending it to. I mean, you know, a lot of us. If we see, there was something going around with Instagram the, um, about last year or a year or so ago, and it was talking about if you if you don't sign up to something, all your messages are going to be deleted and blah blah blah. That was a hoax. People will share that because they're going to be thinking, "Oh my God, you know, I don't want my friend to lose their messages." Likewise, somebody who cares about somebody who knows that they eat butter, they'll be sharing that, thinking, "I don't want that person to get hurt or damaged or get sick," because of what is happening. So a lot of people share this information with good intentions. They don't think that they're sharing um, something that's untrue or that it's a hoax. A lot of people would even think like that unless you've got a mindset like that. You're not going to think that somebody would conjure up something so sinister and have it spread around. But that is what happens and that is how a lot of things get spread because people are not checking and um, researching before sharing. They're just sharing stuff as soon as they receive it. I remember seeing um, receiving something about, um, I don't know if it was about black people or Jamaicans, it was totally false. Oh, it was about... Um, a Jamaican restaurant, I think it was. And it was claiming that all these things was wrong with this Jamaican restaurant. And I said to them, why are you sharing that? Do you know if that information is real? Do you know if that inf information is true? Do you know if somebody's just created that out of revenge and you're sharing it and you can damage the reputation of that shop or of that owner? And you don't even know if it's true. You don't know what people's motives are these days for sending around information that is destructive. 
And sometimes when you see this information, it is destructive. Um, what else did I want to say? Yeah, so believing hoaxes, it's got nothing to do with lack of intelligence. It's got nothing to do with being stupid. But what will happen is the person who's been taken in by it might feel stupid if once they realise that it is a hoax. That's what I'm saying. But it's not. it doesn't mean that you're stupid just because you believe it. Because like I said, if it aligns with your values, it aligns with something that you believe in, it aligns with something that you like or something that you're doing, like with Instagram, people are on Instagram, they're bound to be affected by a hoax that goes around talking about something that could jeopardise their messages. So they are, they could well take it seriously. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, is a hoax a joke? And when do hoaxes cease to be funny? How do you distinguish a hoax from a lie, a prank or a joke? You have April Fuels, like I said, you've got Candid Camera, you've got Game for a Laugh. And then you have none not so funny hoaxes with the 911 calls. Or someone saying that there's a bomb in the station or something. Getting everybody out of the station, inconveniencing everyone and there's nothing there. Um... Yeah, so it's when you could potentially put somebody into danger. That is when it, it goes, it's, it's gone beyond a joke. Um, why do they do it? Entertainment, boredom, revenge, to gain attention. You get people who, who fabricate illness and make out like they're sick just to get somebody on side. You get people um, online trying to make out like they're poor or disabled to get money, to solicit money from people. People do all kinds of things to try and solicit some kind of empathy or sympathy or create attention. So it's really important when you get information like the one that I've put on the front of my video that's containing false information. It's really important that before you share it, you check it out. Because otherwise, you're damaging the reputation even more of a credible institution or a credible company or a credible person. Um, let me see what else. Deception online datings. I've said that. Um, we don't know who the people are behind the profiles. Anybody can put anything up. I mean, Facebook is getting a bit more stringent. They're talking about you have to put in telephone numbers. and But you don't really have to put a telephone number in. It's optional. And I mean, why should you put a telephone number? You don't even need a telephone number with Facebook. They can call you direct without a phone number, which I think is quite scary. Somebody called me the other day from Facebook and I'm like, how the hell did you call me? They, my number isn't on Facebook. And yet they were able to call. I don't think that should be permitted. I really don't think people should be able to call you like that. But it happens. Um... So do you, are you the type of person that feels you have to exaggerate or amplify your behaviour to be accepted? I mean, and what, how much of that is genuine? How much of that is a hoax? Do you feel as though you've got to um, behave in a certain way to be accepted? I mean, and is that kind of like a joke? Could that be construed as a joke? Can you say, um, if you're behaving in a demure way and blah, 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 and the next minute they see you really angry, and you can say, oh, I was only joking, I'm not really like that, you know, oh, that's not really the way I am, when you get caught off guard, because people lie, don't they, people pretend they are what they're not, how do you know who people are, and, you know, it, it we start off with anchor butter, but anchor butter, that, that, that um, message that went down, that's based on deception. It's based on a lie. And that lie extends into lots of different areas in our lives. And so even when, even though that's just one element, when you extend it to other areas of our lives, it just shows that sometimes the whole, our whole lives are a lie because we're constantly compromising ourselves. We're constantly trying to do things to be accepted. We're pretending we're something that we're not. A lot of people on Facebook make out like they go on holidays, make out like they're happy, make out like they've got lots of friends, when really they're sitting at home feeling kind of sorry for themselves. So we have different reasons why people behave in a certain way to feel accepted. And um, yeah, I guess we're just to feel accepted, I guess. Um, yeah, so 
yeah, I think that's about it. I'm not going to belabor the point. I think I've got my point across. So, anchor butter, there's nothing wrong with it. So don't let it stop you from going and buying it. Okay, and that's all for now. Bye-bye.